Hello, today I have an extra special video uh, because I've been wanting to make this for over a year. It's about Immerse, which uh, just to let you guys know right off the bat, it is the company that I work for, but I would be making this video even if I didn't work for Immerse because it's something that I love and something that I'm really passionate about. If you haven't heard about Immerse before, we teach languages. Uh, we currently have three. We have English, Spanish, and French. And we have different live classes that you can take, but also things that you can do on your own. So today we are going to take a look at what Immerse is. And then I hopped into a couple of French classes, which I don't speak French, um, so you could see what it's like for a learner. But then also um, I wanted to be able to share some of my experiences and one of uh, my coworkers is going to join me, which is the person that I took the classes from. So I'm really excited to talk about Immerse and the work that we are doing and how we're changing the world of a language learning. So let's take a look at what Immerse is. All right, so when you join, you start off in your home room. So these are the different places you can join in Immerse. The first one is Learn, which are 35 minute uh, live lessons. And so you'll have a guide or an instructor and um, other members in there, and they'll focus on different things. So for example, um, on the right hand side, you can see our um, upcoming lessons. So this one, um, right now, as you can see, it is 2.10. Um, in 10 minutes, there is an intermediate class starting, and we have it in the resort. Um, and then we have a foundations lesson, which is our lowest level, and then beginner is our medium level. So you can see what scene it's going to be in. You get a little bit of um, information about what the class is going to look like. And then you can also find some resources that you can start um, studying beforehand. So you can click on a word um, and then it appears on your notes. So peor, meaning worse, and then you can click it. Peor. And it'll read it for you and have some examples. And then we have our conversation events, and these are anywhere between one hour to three hours. And in these events, um, it, there's a lot more freedom. So um, we do have a, some structure, but it's definitely a lot more loose. Um, and the whole point of these is for our members to communicate with one another, to use what is already in their heads and be able to share that with other people. Um, and they are live as well with a guide. So the guide is there to uh, jump in when conversation breaks down. So when there's a lot of English or um, whatever the non-target language is because uh, some people are learning English so um, if it's Spanish or whatever language they speak then the guide usually uh, jumps in and helps out with any vocab that they might need or just sort of pushing them more to like hey you're here to practice the language let's continue um, and e there's three main activities each one lasts about like 20 minutes or so um, but we give people the freedom to just talk about whatever. So with this one, for example, um, is talking about vacations and holidays. Um, and so people might start talking about their dream vacation or a trip they've had, um, but that can really go anywhere. So for example, my favorite place to visit is Spain. And so I might talk about like, oh, I love Barcelona, it was so cool. So I might share that I went to La Sagrada Familia, which is this beautiful cathedral. Um, and then we might start talking about architecture. And so we might not be talking about our dream vacation uh, anymore, but as long as we're speaking in Spanish, then we can continue to talk about art or sports or whatever it is that we want to talk about, which is really great. And then we also have our AI practice scenes. And these, uh, you can join a public instance. And here it shows you the different level avatars that you can speak with and the different uh, language functions that you can earn points for and what the focus is for each one of those avatars. Um, but you can also join a private instance. So if you want to join one with your friends, you could uh, put in a code. So uh, like I can put my name. And now everyone who is a Spanish learner that types in Jose will join this instance with me. Or you can also just join one by yourself. And so we have a lot of different locations. Uh, one of my favorites is Central Park. Uh, so let's take a look. So you can walk around. We have an awesome playground there. Here's one of our avatars. Um, and this one focuses on transportation. So I can click here. Hey. Um, and then click on uh, oh, some yeah. of them have multiple ones. 
And so this is telling me that this is Yuki, uh, which is a close friend. I'm, uh, you are meeting a friend at the park, and we are at Central Park. And so here are some tasks that we can talk about. Uh, once I complete them, I earn points for the learning journey. So the first thing is ask how they are. And uh, Yuki said hola. And this is a close friend, so I wouldn't say like como esta, uh, because that's formal. Hola, como estas? Hola, estoy muy bien. Gracias por preguntar. ¿Y tú? And next, I have to ask how they traveled here. But Yuki also asked how I was doing, so I'm going to respond to that and then ask. Estoy bien, gracias por preguntar. Me dijiste que no servía tu carro. ¿Tomaste un Uber? No, hoy vine en bicicleta. Me encanta disfrutar del aire libre cuando el clima es agradable. All right, so she told me how she got here through bicicleta. So let's say I understand a few of these words, but not all of them, and I want to know what it means. I can click right here, and it'll tell me what it means in English if I need it. Entiendo. Hey, I completed all tasks. La bicicleta all task. es una excelente alternativa para distancias más largas. All right, so I completed my task. I can continue to talk or just sort of walk away. I can come over here to our waterfall, have another AI avatar, or I can uh, have instruments and whatnot that you can play. Awesome, so I got a point for home and community, and that is for our learning journey. Then the last main area you can join is play. Uh, which is uh, the commons. And here we have different games. Uh, one of my favorites is Pictionary, but we have some others. I am going to join that. And this is public, by the way. So this is the commons. I always love looking outside in those hot air balloons. I'm gonna put on a top hat and some sunglasses. Dang. Hey. Once a month, we host uh, events in here, so I just hosted a karaoke event, and that was a ton of fun. So if you like to sing, you can grab the mic um, and sing a little song. Besame. So up here, we have this game. It's like um, catchphrase. Ah, puedes dispararla? Dispararla, pero sale líquido. Sale líquido. Then down here, we have a bar gonna have some wine actually I'm gonna have a sangria mm, 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 mm. but my favorite thing in here for sure is Pictionary so I can pick one of these um, categories so I'm going to choose animals and then here I have perro so if I come over here I can try to draw a dog Wow, I don't know in what world that is a dog, um, but I drew a bone. Hopefully people will get it with that. Let's say you've done all these categories and you want some more. You can use our AI generated ones. So I can say something like Marvel superheroes. I submitted that, so now I should have Marvel superheroes. I'm going to grab a card, but I won't show you guys what it is, and then let's see if you can get it. All right, so that's not very great, but I'll give you three seconds to guess. Tres, dos, uno. And if you said Spider-Man, you are right. Woo! Then here we have some Spanish vocab practice. So you press the button and you have to guess what firefighter helmet is. Ooh, uh, bombero. Woo, yay. Cake, uh, pastel. Oh my goodness, I'm not very good at that either, but I got it right. And then the last main game that we have is whack a word, which is like whack a mole. El globo. Uh, hey, balloon. Let's see one more. El sombrero de fiesta. Party hat. Woo, woo, woo. So I love the commons because this is an area where you can come and meet new people, come and meet your friends, and be able to play some games while you continue to uh, practice your vocabulary and learn some new things while having some fun. And then on the right hand side here is where you can track your progress. So if I click on learning journey, 
So this tells me how I can earn points. So five points for lessons, three points for events, and one point for the AI practice scenes. And if you look down, you can see some of the points that you have. Um, this is for Spanish, so I don't have as many as I do in French because I mostly just do the AI practice to show some examples of it. This is where your points would fill up and you can see sort of um, how you're progressing. So now that I've shown you what Immerse is, I'm going to show you what it's like being a student at Immerse. So I jumped into one of our French classes at the foundations level, which is the lowest level, because I speak very little French, as you'll see in a second. And you'll be able to experience what it's like learning these things in context. It feels like I'm in this park, and it is a beautiful day, and a lot of the things that we'll talk about. Um, I'll be able to play the guitar and sing and do all these different things versus just looking at an app on my phone and learning vocabulary that may or may not be useful or that is just out of context. I'm just learning these words, they might come in and then just go out the next second. So let's take a look at what it's like being in one of our classes. Bienvenue au parc. Est-ce que vous aimez courir? Moi, j'aime courir. J'aime courir. It's, it's a great day today. Look at the sky. It's so blue. Uh, I okay. like the rain. You like the rain? Yeah. Tu aimes la pluie? La pluie? La pluie. La pluie. Mm. Ah, la, la pluie. pluie. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. J'aime la pluie. I like the rain. J'aime la pluie. J'aime la pluie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's see what we can do here in the park. You, it could be. Jouer au frisbee. Très bien. Very good. Jouer au frisbee. Jose, do you want to read that second one? Um, jouer basketball. Jouer au basketball. Jouer au basketball. Oh, oh, okay. Jouer au basketball. Hmm, et qu'est-ce que ça veut dire, ça? What does that mean? Play basketball, I hope. And play basketball. <laughs> Spreading spread all up to. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what is that one? Um, faire un piquenique. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> pronunciation is so bad. I'm sorry. Oh, picnic. It's just oh, like an yeah, it's a picnic. <laughs> but now we have some questions. Est-ce que vous aimez le basketball? Do you like basketball? Est-ce que tu aimes courir? Do you like to run? Yeah, uh, can okay. you just, sorry, can you, what is the difference between uh, est-ce que vous uh, and, and then mm -hmm. est-ce que tu? Oh, what's the difference between vous and tu? Sharon, do you know what's the difference between tu and vous in French? Um, tu is you. Oh, is that yes. personal and vous is a group? Yes, exactly. So, oh. tu and vous are you, and they are both you, but tu is going to be the singular, and vous is going to be the plural oh, form of okay, okay. you. Cool. But you can also use vous as a you for a singular person when you want to show respect, when you mm. don't know that person. Okay. Okay? So, that's like the formal you if it's regular. And then, uh, sorry, how do you pronounce sorry. this word again? Which one? Uh, the, I think it's like. M to M. M, M. okay. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do is to match the question M. and answer it on the board. Est-ce que tu aimes les picnics? What does that mean again? Est-ce que tu aimes les picnics? What am I asking here? Do you like picnics? Exactly. Do you like picnics? So, what can I put right next to it? <laughs> Um, I'm assuming either oui. this one or this one. Yep, that would work. So we oui, mm -hmm. Is it M le football? Football? Okay. No, je je ne je n'aime pas le football. Hmm. Courir. Courir. Très bien. Courir. 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 So it would it be okay. pronounced like uh sorry would it be per uh like ku and then a really strong h like he here ku here that would be a 
That would be an R here. Uh, right here? Kurviev. Kur, Kur Kurviev. We are going to do two things. So first, I want you to move around the park all right, and find two things that you like and two things that you don't like. You can just take a picture of it with your camera in your backpack. Oh, well, I'm thinking of the treehouse. Oh, the treehouse, yeah. I can take a picture of that for you if you want. <laughs> What about you, Jose? Zem joie de la guitare. Ah, super! J'aime jouer de la guitare. We use the time. Yeah, très bien. Mm. Do you know how to say it to sing, Sharon? No? Canto. It's going to be ch I think. chanté. Chanté. Chanté? Isn't that like nice to meet you? Like, ah, chanté? Oh, ah, chanté is nice to meet you. Ah, chanté. Oh, okay. So, chanté. Uh -huh. And chanté, it's like cantar, right? Chanté, okay. <laughs> don't like that. Yeah, don't like that. <laughs> All right. So you're going to walk together and you're going to take turns drawing cards. And you're going to see an activity. It's going to show you a picture. And you're going to ask your partner whether they like or, they, whether they like or not uh, to the activity that is on the picture. Tramis. A dance? Oh, da dance? Uh, oui. Um, uh, uh, J'aime dance. Um, oh, um, J'aime, uh, est que tu aimes uh, the snow? <laughs> La neige. La neige. La neige. La neige. Mm -hmm. La neige. Très bien. La neige. Oui. Ask it to. Le. Le glacé. How is that? Ah. Oh. Um. J'aime manger la glace. Yes. Ah. Oui. Um, est-ce que tu jouais le football? Je n'aime pas football. Mm -hmm. Um, football américain? Oui. Très bien, super. Ok, on va revoir maintenant. We're going to review now. Si tu aimes la danse, the activity uh -huh. of dancing. It can be, do you like dancing in general? Do you like to, you know, watch people dancing? But when you're asking about the activity, here is going to be, tu aimes danser? Do you like to dance? You like okay. to dance. There is a like a tiny difference. Here it's more general. Do you like uh, dancing as like the activity in general? Okay. All right. So now okay. the lesson is over. Our lesson is over. But here I have a little poll for you. Can you say what you like and what you don't like? How do you feel? Um, good. We. Oui. We. Oui? We. Oui. Yay! Awesome! All right. Well, the lesson is over now, and if you want to stay here together and practice, you're more than welcome to. But if not, you can also take another class afterward. And I hope to see you again soon. Great. Merci, uh, merci Sophie. Bientôt. That class was a ton of fun. My favorite part was definitely the pique nique. I was uh, pretty sure that's how it was going to be pronounced.
And now that you've seen what our classes are like, Sophie, who is the instructor that was just there, the guide, is going to join me and we're going to talk a little bit of what it's like being a guide, being a teacher at Immerse. Awesome. Well, that was me in one of our French classes. And today I have Sophie, which was the guide that I had. Uh, thank you so much, Sophie, for teaching such a wonderful class. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining. It was great to have you. And I love how you say picnic instead of picnic. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my favorite. I felt so silly, but also comfortable. It's nice that I can make mistakes and laugh about them uh, without feeling extra silly uh, in there. But Sophie, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, yeah, I've been teaching French for like almost a decade now. And um, so I've been teaching in person. I've been teaching on Zoom. Uh, I've been teaching for high school students, for like adults, for, for little kids. And now I'm teaching at Immerse since, uh, since last year. It's been a year now. So Sophie, how is being a guide at Immerse different than when you used to teach in person or even over Zoom? Yeah, I think the the difference is really the fact that you're immersed, like the immersion is what really makes all the difference. Uh, instead of telling something to our, to our member or student, uh, we can really show them. So for example, if someone asks me, oh, what, what does this mean? Like, oh, what does in French burn a stick means? I can really grab a stick, put it on my pen and burn it and show them like, that's what it is. Yeah. And then... They, they remember a lot better than if I just had translated in English uh, yeah. what it meant. And I love those moments because we also have fire extinguishers that they can grab and like pretend. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. yeah, it, it creates a awesome. whole story and then, yeah, and a whole lot of opportunities of using language. They are already ordering their burger and then there is someone in the back who's doing like, you know, who's prepping the burger. So that's like really cool. And they were like, Oh, la salade, or and then la lettuce, and then la tomate, and then yeah, you have your burger. I actually asked someone yesterday, like what what their favorite scene was, and they said the airport actually. Uh, and it's our bigger, like yeah. biggest scene already, and it's really cool to have your passport. And really, I really like the fact that you can like scan your ticket uh, and show your passport, go to security with your backpack. And that's, one of my, that's really cool. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do at the airport is, uh, before they know this, is I'll give them some scissors or something before they go through security. And I'm like, hey, join me. And then the alarm goes off. And then I change into the cop avatar. And I do like, that's go, so oh, tricky. Woo. That's yeah. sneaky. <laughs> I never try it, actually, next yeah. time. That's a good, see, like, that's like this kind of things that we cannot really teach like in a Zoom class, just because, or it would be just an anecdote, you know, that they won't necessarily remember. Yeah. But then they are like leaving it on Immerse, so they will remember that they got caught at security with scissors in their backpack, that's for sure. Well, speaking of our members, do you have any cool stories about a member or some of our members that uh, you'd like to share? I was in a session um, with my members and they were, sh it was about sharing our hobbies. And there were two members. One was from uh, Ireland and he was an elder uh, man. And the other one was a younger woman who was from California. And they both realized they shared a common interest for motorcycle. And once they realized that they started talking about it in French, they were, they were like, oh, was the model that you drive? Like, how often do you do it? Like, what, what, you know, where do you go? And they started to, to talk about it in French. And I thought it was amazing because they are really like from different parts of the world. They are from different generation. And they found this common interest in, in, in like, you know, learning French, but also motorcycles so they can, you know, talk about it in French. So that was, that was really cool to, to see as a guide. Yeah, no, that's amazing. We're connecting people from different generations, from different parts of the world. Um, it wasn't in my class, but I know one of the other guides shared that the other day they had people from five different continents in their class, in one class, which is crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome to have that. Yeah, we're creating a global community, which is really cool. Do you have any cool story we have in there? Yeah, um, one that always comes to mind is a member who came in with a ton of vocabulary, uh, but then was not able to really communicate uh, with that vocabulary. 
and a lot of our members are actually like that. And this person, after a couple of months at Immerse, came in and said, Jose, guess what I did this weekend? And I asked, what did you do? And he said, I did a 10-minute speech completely in Spanish, memorized in wow. front of my church. Yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh. That's so, so cool. cool. Yeah, it's cool. You come in and maybe you have some vocabulary and stuff already ready, but not that confidence. Some of our members don't feel comfortable speaking with any native speakers. They tense up, but because of our avatars and whatnot and that reducing their anxiety because it doesn't... It feels like it's them, but but not really. We don't really know what our members look like. And so mm -hmm. if they mess up, uh, there's no uh, judgment. And I tell them all the time, like, hey, even if you did mess up, I don't know what you look like. I don't know who you are. But even if I did, I'm going to be kind. We're all kind and we're all going to help you. Um, and we're not going to laugh at you, I promise. So, um, yeah, it's, it's super great having those avatars and being able to lower their stress for sure. Mm -hmm. And then obviously for the people that maybe don't feel quite ready or they want some extra practice, they can always go to the AI practice scenes and be able to practice with the AI avatars. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I know when I used to teach over Zoom, there was the convenience of being home, but it also didn't feel like I was there with the people. How does Immerse differ from that? Yeah, I think on Zoom, it was very easy to just turn your camera off and then like do your, your thing on the side uh, or even like just zone, you know, zone out and looking at the screen and not really paying attention. Uh, where on Immerse, it's, it's really almost impossible to do that. You have to be there. And even if you get distracted, it's going to be from something else on the scene and then you can get distracted, but still by using the language, right? If you're like seeing something else on the scene, even though it's not what we were talking about in the lesson, uh, that's going to be another opportunity to use French or Spanish or English, depending on the language you're learning. And and yeah, and, and it's totally fine because you're still learning the language and it creates really a different opportunity to learn something different in a in a context. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And I'm not sure if you've experienced this, but I've had students that come in for their like first lesson and they feel some anxiety because they don't know what to expect or whatever. And because they've had maybe other negative experiences. Um, and so they'll come in and say, Ooh, you know, I, I can I just observe? Uh, I'd rather just hang back. Um, but most of the time, what happens, at least in my case, is that within the first few minutes, by the start of the yeah. first activity, they start answering, even though I haven't asked them to. And they're wanting to jump in because they feel really comfortable, I'm assuming, because of our avatars and stuff. Yeah, they want to participate. And we're like, most of the time, yeah, the same situation as you, they will like, at first, they will like stand in the back and then realize they can actually participate. And yeah, they right away they jump in and and they want to like you know do the activity. You know? uh, and I think I a big part of that is because of the guides, right? We are very welcoming and we want to make sure that they know that they can fail and that they should fail so that they can learn. Um, but also because of our community, I feel like we have a lot of awesome members that are there to support one another. They're all there for the same reason. They want to learn. They're choosing to be here. They're not forced to be here. So they want to help each other because they probably have gone through the same thing. Um, and so, yeah, it's always awesome to see that in classes. Yeah. And it's, and it's fun too. And when, when there is a member who like actually knows a little more than another, we always ask them to help rather than, you know, having like this weird discrepancy or like weird anxiety. Oh, he knows better than me. Now nah, he looks like I look bad because, you know, I, 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 I'm not as good. Well, they actually want to help. They're like, oh, would you like, I, I know that as a guide, if someone asks me a question, I will try to ask the other members if they can help rather than right away jump in and like tell them. Yeah. Um, I'll be like, oh, do you know what this means? Or, oh, can you help? Do you know? And most of the time, they are like very happy to, to help. Yeah, for sure. So uh, earlier today, I was teaching a class in the kitchen and somebody asked, what's a bistec? And so instead of just saying, oh, it's a steak, I have a couple of options, right? I can grab the steak and show it to them. I can also involve the members. Hey, does anybody else know what bistec means? And so then it helps really build that community. And it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's amazing, Sophie. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for teaching the class and for joining me uh, to talk a little bit of what it's like being a guide. For sure. I love it. 
Awesome. Well, I hope that you enjoyed my video today. It's been great being able to talk about something that I'm super passionate about. And I say this jokingly, but also not jokingly. I hope to retire with the MERS because it's something that I'm really passionate about. I love the people that I work with. I love the things that we do and our mission and vision that we have. And if you want to learn more about Immerse and you want to give it a try, there's a few different ways to do it. So this was definitely VR focused, but if you go to Immerse.com, you can also take classes via a desktop and you'll also be able to find Immerse on the MetaQuest store. Just download the app and you'll be able to start taking classes that same day or jump into our AI practice scenes or some of the other things that you've seen. We offer a 14 day trial so you can give it a try and I hope to see you in one of my Spanish classes soon. Adios.